Out of all the playsets I've tried to collect on this journey, this one has been the hardest. The Kenner Star Wars Cloud City playset from 1980. Today, we're gonna learn about its history, how to put it together, and why this was so hard for me to get. Let's go. Welcome back to The Journey, and this week, we're gonna be talking about what I think is one of the most interesting toys to come out of the Kenner Star Wars line. And to really understand it, we're gonna have to know why it was made and where the toy line was positioned at the time. With the blockbuster success of the first Star Wars movie and the success of the toy line and merchandise that was available to fans, when the Empire Strikes Back movie came out, Kenner, Lucasfilm, and 20th Century Fox doubled down on the number of toys that factories would distribute and added more diversity of toys to the lineup. With the past success of teaming up with stores such as JCPenney and Sears, they would use these businesses to release exclusive offers to bundle action figures with cheaply made playsets. Such was the case with the Can Tina Adventure Set, released in 1978 for the original Star Wars line of toys. This was to sell more action figures to parents and market it as a better value. This did quite well, and Sears would market and distribute the Cloud City playset in their 1980 Wish Book catalog. This would be the only playset that depicted the events on Bespin, and this was because Kenner had plans to introduce the Micro Collection in 1982. That line would offer toys at price points that appealed to parents. This would be in the Bespin Control Room, Bespin Gantry, Bespin Freeze Chamber, and the Bespin World that combined all three into one offering that you can buy bundled together and get all 16 micro figures. That line flopped and was quickly canceled, and above that, there were no plans to make full-size playsets for Bespin. Although we got a whopping four playsets for Hoth in the three and three quarter line, so the Cloud City playset was all that we got for such an important part of the movie. And in the 90s, Hasbro, who now had the license for the Star Wars toys, developed a Bespin Freeze Chamber playset, but it was never released. There was one released in 2001 for Hasbro's Power of the Jedi line, but nowadays you can get the Carbon Freezing Chamber made for the vintage collection that was released in 2020. The Kenner Cloud City playset was released in 1980 as a Sears exclusive. It first retailed for $6.99, which in today's prices would be $26.16, and as stated earlier, was meant to do one thing, move action figure sales. It was made of a very thin and flimsy cardboard, Feeling much like a firm greeting card, it depicted the carbon freezing chamber where Han Solo meets a frozen fate and where Luke Skywalker starts his duel with Darth Vader. In the US, it was bundled with four action figures, Han Solo in Bespin Outfit, Lobot, Dengar, and Ugnaught. Although in Canada, the same playset was sold with five different action figures, Boba Fett, Lando Calrissian, the original version of Han Solo, Dengar, and Lobot. The Canadians always get the better playset bundles. This toy was only ever issued for The Empire Strikes Back and never was reissued for Return of the Jedi. The US box depicts the playset all set up with the four available action figures displayed, while the Canadian box is the bilingual French and English box. But while having different action figures inside the box, the same photo was used as its US counterpart. I bought the US Kenner version from a seller on eBay and I had never bought from this person before, which I do try and avoid, especially since these hard to find playsets are very pricey. And I am very picky on how I expect sellers to ship these items to me so they stay protected. A link to the full unboxing video is in the description of this video if you wanna see that. But first, these videos take a lot of time, effort, and resources to bring to you. So to make videos like this possible, there's links in my description that support my channel like visiting my website to find my merch shop, as well as collecting supplies to keep your collection safe and displayed perfectly. Even by liking this video and subscribing to the channel, it helps me out greatly. I also would like to thank my supporters on Patreon, which you can join for as low as $2.50. You get perks like my collecting sheets, exclusive content, member shoutouts, extra entries into giveaways, and early access to see videos. Or become a member right here on YouTube by hitting the join button. For as low as 99 cents a month, you get access to watch videos early, member shoutouts, 
badges, and extra entries into giveaways. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. All the links are down in my description. Now, back to the video. The seller I got this from did a great job shipping, and in this case, I bought a version that had all unused contents. So if you were to have gotten this US Kenner version in 1980, this is what it would have come with. One box, which might I add is quite small compared to all the other playset boxes by Kenner. One cardboard insert, which contains these items. One Star Wars Empire Strikes Back mini catalog. One white box that contains four action figures in sealed Kenner baggies. Han Solo investment outfit, Dengar, Lobot, and Ugnaught. This comes with an instruction manual and the two cardboard playset backdrops. The main base that's made of a thin cardboard has the printed art on one side and the raw cardboard on the other. Then we have the carbon-free substructure that has printed art on one side and raw cardboard on the flip side. The original box would have also come with white action pegs in a sealed clear baggie. And although you only need six pegs, the original baggie would have come with 13 or 14 pegs. I've seen baggies with different numbers. The baggie I have has been opened and contains 12 action pegs. In cleaning this playset, I would suggest just using a microfiber cloth to get visible dust off and avoiding getting any moisture on this playset surface since it's very thin and you can warp the cardboard very easy. So in this case, before you buy, it's best to have a seller send you detailed pictures of the cardboard surface if you're buying it online or doing a detailed inspection of the surface to look for any stains, mold, or imperfections before you buy and using that inspection to lower the price if you're able to negotiate a price based on condition. The playset I bought has all unused contents and it's really cool for me to get playsets like this in that condition to see how they came from the factory. And it's also to keep items like this in that preserved state since they are so rare to see like that. So for this video, I won't be setting up the one I bought, but I reached out to my friend Andy from the Hollow Chronicles YouTube channel to help us out and provide video of how to set this up. So please check out the Hollow Chronicles YouTube channel and tell them that the Padawan sent you. There's a link in my description to their channel. So using our instructions, let's put this toy together. Taking the printed cardboard items, pre-fold all the areas that are scored to make the assembly easier. After you've done this for both cardboarded assets, find the background cardboard, fold it upright at a 90 degree angle and lock the tab securely to the flat base portion. Next, get the chamber cardboard piece and insert the tab at the bottom front area through the slot in the chamber and open those tabs. Next, fold the top of the chamber area up then raise the main body of the chamber up and connect the back tabs to the background cardboard. Being really careful not to force the tabs in and fraying or ripping any of the tabs. Fold these tabs down to secure the chamber in place. Take the top of the chamber and using the tab, slide this through the slot and gently lock it into place. Next is to find all the peg slots throughout the playset. Get the white action figure pegs and insert these pegs through the designated perforations and twist at least 45 degrees to lock into place, keeping the pegs secure. When it's all set up, it does make a great diorama for your figures to act out some scenes on Bespin. On the top is a background image of Cloud City and on the bridge is an area to stage figures with the hole where you can submerge Han Solo into the carbonite freezing chamber. There are no mechanical parts on this playset, so you'll have to lower and raise the figures up and down on your own. On the front left of the playset is printed art of a stormtrooper guarding the area and a flat place to display figures on a peg. On the front of the bridge area is a picture of an Ugnaught manning the carbon chamber, and to the right rear, a stormtrooper manning the device that Darth Vader uses on Han Solo, with a flat area in front of this to display figures on pegs. Now the play value on this is super minimal, and I would have only used this as a kid to stage my figures on a shelf. And in handling this playset, it's not the most sturdy of sets and I can see this thing being broken, torn, or flattened by regular play. 
And in the way that I'm gonna display it, I'm gonna keep everything inside the box and inside an acrylic case. So now to the part about how much I paid for my playset. And remember, all of these are in unused condition. Well, right now, complete versions of this that are loose and in great condition with no box, but with figures, not in baggies, are selling anywhere from $700 to $1,000 in great condition. For the complete version I have with all unused contents, all of the paperwork and cardboard with the figures inside sealed baggies, it ran me a total price of $1,653.08, and that's with tax, fees, and shipping included. And when I was shopping, this was the nicest version I found with others in similar condition without the cardboard inserts selling for around $1,200. So let's mark this playset off our list the 1980 Cloud City playset. And as you can see for the Kenner line, I only need one more playset left. Although, I'm gonna get three more from the Palatoy line. But the Cantina Adventure set? That one continues to be a hard one for me to find, at least in the condition and price that I'm willing to pay for it. To get your very own version of this collecting sheet, which is fully editable, go to my website at thepadawancollector.com. We are getting closer and closer to completing the entire run of the Star Wars Kenner playsets. And to see the next video in the series, or to start from the beginning, click on the videos that are on your screen now. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time.